you, Mr. Chair and Ranking Member Rish, and thanks to the witnesses, and I'm not going to ask you to repeat questions that I'm sure my colleagues have asked, but one of the things that I'm interested in is, and I know questions have been asked about European solidarity and how that is going to hang together as we get into winter with energy challenges. If you, if you could talk about the potential role of the current or potential role of the OSCE. We, you know, we often talk about NATO, and that's a flashpoint with Russia, but the OSCE is the broader organization, as you know, that includes many European nations that are not members of NATO, including Russia. Um, and it struck me that during the last administration, I started to notice maybe more of a little bit more activity in the OSCE. Um, so share with me, is there uh, value that that institution is bringing or can bring uh, to this uh, very, very difficult problem? Thank you. Thank you, Senator. The OSCE, of course, is the institution that was formed around the values of the West. And in this uh, conflict, the, it's allowed us to clarify what it takes to be a member of of the rule-abiding rule group. So the OSCE has a set of institutions and standards that are very important as we move forward. I know the secretary is, a visit, is attending an OSCE ministerial and democratic elections in the next week. That will be a key place to highlight some of the um, important steps governments can take to reinforce the rule of law for having free and fair elections and taking steps against corruption. That um, is very important, particularly through uh, Central Asia. Um, I was just meeting yesterday with a, a visiting minister, um, and this was one of the highlight, uh, one of the focal areas of the, the meeting, and you're seeing the OSCE as a place in which we, we refine the standards and help one another meet them. So that's one particular role. It's, Peace and security uh, role is something maybe we can come back and brief you on more. Obviously, with Russia there, it becomes a little more difficult. But the, the role in the rule of law and democratic standards is a vitally important one. Secretary Rosenberg, I want to ask you, and I, I imagine you have been asked this, but if I, if I could, what, what grade would you give to our allies in terms of you know, rigorously complying with sanctions, or how much, how much leakage is there? around the, the sanctions? And I know it varies country to country, but if you could kind of give me a more general answer first, and then if there, if there are things that we can do to improve um, the bite of the sanctions and reduce leakage or in running around the sanctions, what should we do? Thank you, Senator, for the question. We work extremely closely with our colleagues uh, in Europe to, and elsewhere to uh, bring forward sanctions, uh, sharing information in order to construct the packages, uh, the technical um, uh, work of implementing them, uh, enforcing them, sharing information for enforcement actions that we can take in our jurisdiction or they can take in theirs. The sanctions that we have brought forward with respect to Russia are unprecedented in their scope and scale and the number of international partners involved in addition to those European partners with whom we work, with which we work closely, uh, also partners in East Asia. This is the first time that Singapore, for example, has brought forward the kind of sanctions program uh, uh, here on an individual country outside of a UN framework. The same is true for a number of East Asian partners. Uh, the information exchange that we have all had, including with these Asian allies, has been truly unprecedented. And furthermore, there's a development of a technical the technical implementation here is is fresh in this experience here. The information sharing, downgrading of information in order to construct these packages and to enforce them, and also the mechanisms for things like licensing, uh, guidance. Uh, this is brand new territory for many of our allies, and they've worked at lightning speed to implement it. It's truly a feat and sets us up for other shared challenges that we may encounter in the future. Thank you for that. I'll just conclude and say that my colleagues know I don't, I don't mind criticizing administrations that are Democratic or Republican um, if, if things are going wrong, and not that everything with respect to the U.S. response in Ukraine has gone right or perfectly. But you confronted, the administration confronted a very, very difficult challenge, which is European nations, including Ukraine, did not think there would be an invasion. We believed there would be. And so with the same facts, we had very different predictions about what would happen. And I think what the administration did, given that challenge, 
was really uh, adroit in pre-negotiating a set of consequences that would snap into place if our prediction turned out to be right and our allies were wrong. We wanted them to be right and us to be wrong, but if we were right and they were wrong, the way the administration put consequences in place in advance, I, I think I, I just give that very, very high marks and I appreciate your role in that. And, that, and with that, Mr. Chair, I yield back.